Last week, AMD hosted their launch event for RDNA 3 in Las Vegas, and they invited a host of media outlets to join the festivities. I wasn't invited, of course, but no worries. I watched the entire live stream and formed my own potentially controversial opinion on these upcoming graphic solutions. Let's talk about it. I'm not gonna waste any time with this today. I'm just gonna get right into the information and tell you everything I think about these new GPUs from AMD. First of all, AMD only showed up with two GPUs, which I guess is double what Nvidia showed up with when they first launched, because the only thing out right now is the 4090. They revealed the RX 7900 XTX, which comes in at 999 USD, and the RX 7900 XT, which comes in at 899 USD. They're gonna be available on December 13th. The 7900 XTX has 96 CUs versus the 7900 XT's 84 CUs. It's got a 2.3 gigahertz game clock versus the two gigahertz that the 7900 XT has. It's got four gigs more VRAM on a 384 bit bus versus the 320 bit bus. And it uses 355 watts of board power against the 300 that the XT version has. Both of these GPUs are built on a chiplet design, which is similar to their Ryzen CPUs, what it does is it cuts cost and it allows them to yield more dyes because when they aren't producing as big of a massive die, they can produce more of them on each wafer. So it's saving them money, saving you money in the long run, and allowing them to make more GPUs. That's really all you need to know about the cards themselves. There's a few interesting points about RDNA 3 that I want to highlight that I've discovered so far. The first thing I want to highlight is the price for the expected performance seems to be really good. If this is a 4080 competitor, which they're saying it is, and the 4080 is $1,200, $200 less for the same performance, it's not a bad idea. AMD's Frank Azor, who is the chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing, wow, that's a title. He made a statement after the RDNA 3 launch event, and he said this, the 7900 XTX is designed to go against the 4080, and we don't have benchmark numbers on the 4080. That's really the reason why you didn't see any Nvidia comparison. The 999 card is not a 4090 competitor, which costs 60% more. This is a 4080 competitor. Now, whether or not they designed this thing to be a 4080 competitor, or they decided that it's going to be a competitor because it doesn't compete with the 4090, I don't know. But the fact is, the 4080 16 gigabyte model that's still coming out on November 12th is going to be $1,200 USD. This card that's supposed to compete with it and possibly even beat it is gonna be $200 less. Something interesting that I found, YouTuber Cortex decided to make some fun speculative graphs on the 4090 versus the 7900 XT performance, and he used Hardware Unbox's 4090 review benchmarks as a baseline to create these charts. So I'll link his Twitter post below where he made these charts at, but this is where I grabbed them from. He made four different charts based on the performance increase over the 6950 XT. So he made a 40% chart, a 50%, 60%, and 70% chart. I'm just going to go off of the 40% because this is going to show you the worst performance estimate of the 7900 XTX. In a 13 game average against the 6950 XT at 85 FPS average, it can achieve 119 FPS average. This is in 4K over a 13 game average. That puts it 17% slower than the 4090. Now, this is nothing official or anything like that, but it's interesting to see in an actual chart how close these things are in performance versus the price difference. Because the 4090 comes in at $1,600. The 7900 XTX is only $1,000. I say only $1,000. I'm using that, that title lightly. What they've done by creating these two GPUs is disrupt NVIDIA's pricing ladder for their lower tier cards, like the 4080 and the 4070 and such. If you look at these performance graphs I have here, these were put out by NVIDIA when they launched their 4080 16 gig and 12 gig variants, which the 12 gig doesn't exist anymore. So anyways, you can take a look at these graphs still. They're all over the internet. They can't go away once they're already there. But you can see the expected performance in three different games. This is with ray tracing off on max settings with DLSS on. Now they've separated the DLSS into green and dark green, light green, that kind of stuff. So that doesn't matter, just ignore that. Look at the gray performance here. This is your rasterization performance of the 4090 and 4080s and then 30 series cards down here. The 3090 Ti achieved 50.6 in a Plague Tale, um, but the 4080 16 gigabyte only achieved 55.2. 
So you're gonna sell a $1,200 graphics card that only gets a couple points higher on FPS. And the 4080 12 gig, which should be called a 4070 now, is even further behind. So you can expect the 7900 XTX to be right around this 55 number. And if you look at a couple of these other games, it's even closer. Here's 57 and 49. And then you've got 79. The 4090 is not as far away in this title. And this is with ray tracing on, mind you. So that's why it took such a performance hit without DLSS. And then you have Microsoft Flight Simulator where it closes the gap even more on uh, normal rasterization performance without DLSS or anything. I just think that's something interesting that we need to take a look at more and we won't know until performance reviews come out on these new AMD cards and the NVIDIA 4080, of course. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. I'll keep you up to date. Listen up streamers. Another cool thing that AMD released at the RDNA 3 event is AV1 encoding and decoding. This is the next generation of encoding like H.264. If you're a streamer out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. What this will do is allow for better streaming quality at a lower bit rate. It's a lot of complications and I really don't know a whole lot about it because I don't stream. So maybe it's something I need to do a little bit more brush up on. But one of the problems that people have uh, expressed with NVIDIA's NV encoder is that you need a really high bit rate to be able to produce a high quality image. And with AV1 encoding, you don't need that. Obviously, it's going to do something good because NVIDIA has thrown two NV encoders in their RTX 4090. So AMD is going to have AV1 as well, and that should bring their quality of streaming up substantially over RDNA 2. Another cool thing is it's open sourced. So it's not like the NV encoder where only NVIDIA GPUs can use it. AV1 can be used by anybody. In fact, Intel has it in their GPUs as well. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting value from this, smash that like button for me down below to let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. Now, there's a few unknowns that weren't really addressed at the press conference and a lot of questions that are left about AMD's GPUs. For one, there was really no performance graphs given. A lot of it was like the smoke and mirrors effect. They did have some performance numbers with ray tracing and stuff like that versus the 6950 XT. They have no comparison to the 4090 or 4080 for that matter because the 4080 is not out yet. They have FSR turned on on all these settings so you don't know what FSR settings they're using. All you're seeing is a couple FPS numbers compared to their old generation of GPUs. And then their claimed numbers in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, they got a 1.5 times increase over the 6950 XT at 4K. Uh, Watchdog Legion, Cyberpunk, they got a 1.7 times. And then with ray tracing, they're showing 1.6 times, 1.5 times. So their ray tracing performance we can already expect is not going to be near as good as Nvidia's ray tracing performance. However, an increase is still an increase. And they're doing it at substantially less increased cost than what Nvidia's high-end cards are doing right now. So if they can come up with good quality streaming capabilities and high rasterization performance at this price, AMD might have a winner on their hands. What I'm upset about is there's no 4090 competitor. I don't know if the 7900 XTX was designed by AMD to be that competitor and they just fell short of it, or if all along they really were just knowing that they couldn't compete with that, so they were targeting the 4080 to begin with. Who knows? By them leaving that out there and letting NVIDIA hold that crown, that just makes NVIDIA be able to charge whatever they want for the 4090. There is no competitiveness. Uh, they have the 4090 Ti waiting in the wings and they can just release it at any time and beat anything that AMD comes out with. So by them getting ahead like that, that's hurting AMD in the long run. AMD teased FSR 3 at the press conference. It's just like NVIDIA's DLSS 3. Um, they, they're saying that it's not in direct competition, like they didn't design it because NVIDIA designed DLSS 3. It was something they've been working on for a long time. It's cool to see the evolution of technology, but it's the same concept as DLSS 3. If you've seen it in action or anything so far, there's a couple of reviewers that have tried it on the 4090 and it's terrible. It doesn't work. There's a lot of glitching and stuff like that. And it's only available for like three games. I think by November, they said there's going to be five games total that can use it. So until these companies adopt it and really start to hone in on that technology, it's not going to matter anyways. Another thing that AMD didn't talk about is the output ports on the back of the GPU. They didn't mention it or anything. At least I didn't see it. Maybe they did. But you can see on their pictures here, they've got one HDMI 2.1 port, two DisplayPort 2.1s, and then a USB-C connection as well. 
I'm wondering if they're thinking about pushing VR gaming with these new cards. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of that those would be used for. If you've been a gamer for a little while, there's some GPUs that NVIDIA came out with a few years ago that had a USB-C connection in it as well. And I don't know if it really made a difference or people used it or not. I didn't use it. It just took up space and kind of limited me from being able to plug another DisplayPort cable in or another HDMI cable. I would honestly rather just have four normal size display outputs. What do you think? What would you rather have? The last thing that might be a little problem for AMD is their driver support. AMD is known for having bad drivers at launch and this is gonna be no different. This is a new design, new architecture. It's a chiplet design, remember? So I would expect them to have problems with these drivers from day one, they usually do. And it's a shame because the 6000 series cards have been out for two plus years now. All the driver issues are gone from them. They had drivers issues at the beginning too. So you can just expect it. That's why AMD really needed a win with this 7900 XTX. They needed to kill the 4090 and they didn't, they fell short. So what are the takeaways from this? What do I want you to take out of this video? AMD's RX 7000 series cards have arrived and they aren't looking too bad to be honest. They bumped up the VRAM, added DisplayPort 2.1, and kept the pyro requirement low. I'm anxious to see if they can compete in the performance category, and we won't know until those reviews go live. Now, AMD might have tossed the white flag when it comes to the RTX 4090, but honestly, the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT have the potential to put some serious pressure on NVIDIA's 4080 and 4070. What do you think? Do you think NVIDIA is going to drop the price of their 4080 based on AMD's performance numbers? Or do you think they're going to keep it at it and still sell out on day one? I honestly think the 4070 or the 4080 12 gigabyte is dead in the water if they come in at the price point that they were expecting. My prediction is they'll rebrand the 4080 12 gig as a 4070 and release it at about $800 USD. AMD does have the potential to drop prices as they always do. They price their things very competitively. And then just look at the 6000 series right now. They're cutting and slashing prices almost daily and they're undercutting Nvidia by a tremendous amount. Is it helping them make sales? I don't know, only time will tell. And if you wanna keep up with the latest hardware news, consider subscribing down below. And if you're interested in more PC related videos, I have some right over here that you can check out now because this video is done. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one. Go back to, why don't